So Garfield comes home in his uniform, and Chauncey Black introduces him to his father. And uh, here's Jeremiah Sullivan Black. He's at the you know, peak of his powers. Garfield shows up. Garfield actually goes into the Congress the first day, only the first day, wearing his uniform with all of his major general buttons on it or something, just to remind everybody of who he was. He was 32 years old, major general, and he's starting his career in Congress. Now later, Briggins, of all the books uh, on uh, Black, I think this one's the best. It's just called Jeremiah Sullivan Black. It was a PhD dissertation. It's published by the University of Pennsylvania Press in 1934. But this is what he says. Thereupon began one of the most unique of friendships among public men. Black was 21 years the elder. He was an intense and radical Democrat. Garfield was a thorough Republican. Upon the surface, the only common tie between them was the fact that both were members of the same church, the followers of Alexander Campbell going to church there in Washington, D.C. Then, as they're talking, Black says to him one day, do you know the case of Milligan? What do you think? And, Mill and Garfield says, I'm on Milligan's side. I don't think civilians should be tried in front of military tribunals the way Milligan was. Three of them were tried in 1864. The war was still going on. They lived in Indiana, which was in the north. But they were speaking in favor of the south. They were giving comfort to the south. They were accused of rebellion. They were accused of causing all, and they were suffered to hang. They were, the verdict came down, you were to die. You don't live in Indiana and give comfort to these Confederates. And Garfield, who was a thorough anti-slavery man from the North, he didn't agree with that. There were civil courts that could have tried their case. Black said, I've decided to help Milligan, and we're going to take this to the Supreme Court. Would you help me? And so Garfield goes home and reads up on it, and he said, yes, I believe this. And Black says to him, this will hurt you in your career. This will hurt you with the Republicans. They will never forgive you for this. And Garfield says, no, this is right. I believe this. So they go before this court, Salmon Chase. There he is sitting in the middle. Here are the nine members of the Supreme Court. Black says to Garfield, how long have you been you know, a member of the bar? Six years. How many cases have you tried? None. I've never been in a courtroom. Yeah, I went to law school. I got my training over there in Cleveland. And he said, well, we're going before the Supreme Court. Are you ready? And he said, I'm not sure. The Supreme Court for my first case. And then Black says, I've laid out a strategy. I think you ought to go first. <laughs> so it's in the book that Hinsdale put out on the great speeches of Garfield. It's in our library. And Gar Garfield speaks for two hours before the Supreme Court. He's never spoken in any court. And he flaps his wings with a two-hour tour de force. And he and Black win that case. Um, you know, here, here's my copy, the Milligan case. This is over 500 pages. I see that I paid, I paid $50 for this one, but it's worth this 1929 book. I don't know where I found it. But all the speeches are there, and uh, this is really cementing the friendship now. The Milliken case, 1921, that's my book. And then Alexander Campbell dies, and his will is challenged. And his widow says to Black and Garfield, will the two of you come and defend the will of my late husband? Well, of course, they, they love Alexander Campbell. So in 1868, they're working together again, only two years after Milligan. They're working together, and they win that case, and they you know, defend the will of Campbell. Now, Garfield's a member of Congress, and he's made chairman of the Military Affairs of the House of Representatives, 1867 to 69. He's the chairman. That's him in the middle with his beard. And they're going to church at a poor little building, which later, when Garfield becomes president of the United States, and he's still going to this church building, the press made fun of this building and called it the Campbellite Shanty, using a slang slur for Alexander Campbell. These followers of Campbell are Campbellites, and this is their shanty they call a church building. 
And it was pretty unattractive. When Garfield was president, the man who would drive him in the horse and buggy to this church would say to him, after I let you and your wife and your mother off, can I go park over there in front of the Episcopal Church? It's much nicer. And, and the other drivers make fun of me when I'm over here in front of this. And Garfield said, yes, yes, you can do it, but you cannot be late picking us up. The president of, the church, of, of America cannot be standing around on a corner waiting for his ride to come pick him up. So here's where they went to church, the old Vermont Avenue Christian Church. And it needed a preacher, and they worked together to go get H.T. Anderson. Henry Tompkins Anderson had produced an amazing translation of the Bible. The Anderson Bible came out in 1864. He's a brilliant scholar. How did they get him a job? He needed money. They went to U.S. Grant, the president, and they said, we need a job so we can bring this man to Washington and be our preacher. And Grant gave him a job in his administration. So now Anderson comes. So the friendship between, it's growing and it's getting stronger. And... Um, Garfield writes things like this in his diary. I spent a delightful evening and night with the judge in his new house. This would be in York, Pennsylvania. He is a glorious man, full of ideas, full of power. Their, their friendship is really growing here in 18... I didn't mention, they did a case in 1870. I'm going to show his picture. They defended the Phillips brothers. And the, of Newcastle, Pennsylvania, and they won that case. The Phillips brothers were in petroleum, and they loved both Black and Garfield, but they were Republicans like Garfield. And uh, do we have any connection with the Phillips at Pepperdine? Probably not. But that T.W. Phillips, who they won that case for, his children and grandchildren gave us the money to build a 125-foot theme tower at the entrance to our campus with a cross in it. So the Phillips theme tower out there, which I can see from my plane, you know, when I'm flying back from San Francisco, you look down from your flight, you can see the Pepperdine campus. That slender white needle is shooting up. It just, you can spot it from many, many miles away. That's the Phillips tower. And they won that case in 1870. But look at what, well, look at what Garfield is writing. Things like this. I never meet Judge Black without feeling what power and culture and genius of mind have done to overcome all the roughness of partisan feeling. In other words, we argue a lot. Overcome the roughness of partisan feeling and made a man a great and delightful friend. At the end of that year, when they hadn't seen each other for several months, I caught this in Garfield's diary. For many months, I have been hungry for the sight of you. Well, that's going to change in three years with the disputed election.